Hey Phil here with a Lightroom editing tutorial. I'll be retouching this photo, making the original photo that looked like this look something like this. And this is a sort of test tutorial I'm prepping for a headshot course that I'm teaching with uh, co-instructor John Hossie. We put out a successful Lightroom masterclass and we are doing a headshot course that will be coming out in December of 2016. And sometimes I just like to practice and make sure that everything's looking right with the portraits that we're going to be using and I don't think I'm going to be using this portrait in the course itself so I thought might as well just make a YouTube tutorial with it. So this one right here it started out as this image so I'll just start out with the basic retouching that I would do with a photo. So the first thing I'm going to do with this photo is crop it for our social media profile. Now if you aren't going to be using this as a thumbnail for your social media then you don't need to crop it this way but I'm going to crop it with a one by one ratio so that it's a perfect square and let's just get in here like so something like this and then I'm also going to rotate it just a bit so that his eyes are a little bit more aligned with the photo and maybe make it a little bit bigger so that his eyes are on that third line making it just a little bit more dynamic something like that maybe just a little bit like so okay so after we crop it and we're happy with our crop the next thing to do is basic adjustments so this is fixing the photos white balance exposure maybe playing with a little bit of style here too but just the basic corrections later on we're going to be looking at things like how to make the eyes pop how to make the skin look a little bit better how to play with blur to make your photos and your portraits a little bit more dynamic but the first thing we have to do is white balance so we can just simply take this white balance color picker and find something that has a neutral tone in the photo luckily caleb here my buddy is wearing a white shirt and you can see as I hover over the white shirt, it gets from goes from white to more of a blue. And that's totally fine because in the shade, there is more blue and that's natural. So I'm going to go over here where it's a little bit more white, something like here, and click. And you can see that if I press backslash on my computer to see before and then after, it does warm it up quite a bit. And if I want, I can go in here and warm it up even more or less, but I'm going to leave it at that. Next, let's look at exposure. So with most portraits, I'm going to make sure that my blacks are pure black and my whites are pure white. The way I can do that is by when I'm clicking and sliding the black slider, I can hold the option key down on my Mac. Uh, it's the alt key if you're on a PC. And as I slide left, you can see that these colors are becoming, or this part of the image are becoming pure black. If I let go of option, you can see that that's pure black. I definitely don't want that. I just want maybe a touch of pure black somewhere in here in the shadow between his neck and his little sweater, which is pure black. And then with the whites, I'll do the same. So I'll drag to the right until I see a bit of pure white. And that's in this building right here. And for the Pure whites, I might not necessarily need pure white yet, so I'm just going to leave it at so, but bring it up a little bit. And this is adding a little bit of contrast to the image. I'm going to decrease the contrast by bringing up the shadows, which will bring out some of the d details in his hair and his beard and in his eyes. We will be editing his eyes separately to make them pop even more later, but this brings out a little bit more of those, those details. Then with highlights, I just like to see what happens with the highlights. Just playing with the highlights kind of brightens up this background, which I don't really like. So I'm actually going to bring that down just a bit to create more of some shape back there, something a little bit more interesting, even though it's not something you're really looking at. It's just a little bit more texture back there that I like. I can play with vibrance and saturation. For those of you who edit with Lightroom a lot, you know that vibrance is an intelligent way to add saturation without adding too much color to skin tones. So I can boost saturations just a bit. And even if I want, I can back down the saturation just a bit if I want just to decrease the overall saturation while boosting the, the vibrance. With the tone curve, I'll also add a little bit of contrast. I'm just going to change the point curve setting down here to medium contrast and that automatically adds a bit of contrast. 
and then I can go in here and sometimes what I like to do is go down to this very blacks and move this up just a bit. So making the pure blacks actually a little bit pure, more of a gray, something like this, just playing a little bit. We might need a little bit it to be brighter or what we can do because after we added this little medium contrast slider or curve, we can just boost the overall exposure just a bit. And this is a stylistic thing. Do you want everything to be a bit overexposed or not? And as I do that, I see with the contrast curve, it adds a little bit of saturation. So I'm going to bring back the vibrance just a bit so that it doesn't, it's not too oversaturated because when you add more contrast, you actually add more saturation to those colors. So we're going to leave the rest of these things as they are for now. And we're going to jump over to some more advanced retouching techniques. First things first are his eyes. One thing he's not doing is showing his teeth, so we don't have to widen the teeth, but we can do that with the brush tool. But with his eyes, we're going to take this radial filter and just click and drag a circle around his eyes. Actually, first, let me just reset these settings so we don't have any settings set yet so that I can sh walk you through it. So with a brand new circle, and then make sure this is on restart, you can just click this restore default settings and just click a circle around his eyes. I have the show selected mask overlay on. You can just press the O button on your keyboard to turn that on and off. And we are using what's around his eyes. We're not editing what's in the eyes. And what we're going to do now is actually drop the sharpness. So everything becomes a little bit blurry. So this is actually pretty cool. We're going to make his eyes, make sure that his eyes are super sharp in the image and maybe blur out some of the things in the rest of the image to make sure that his eyes really pop. So we'll drop the saturation. We might even drop the color temperature just a little bit for the outside of the eyes. We're going to reverse that with his face to bring out a little bit of warmth in his face too. And one thing we want to do now is to erase some of this blur for part of the image. So what I can do is take this brush over here, click erase down here, and then get a good size. I can change the size slider here. And the flow we're gonna do about 66%. Feathering, about the same. It doesn't have to be perfect. Basically what flow is, is if it's at 100, it's erasing completely. With 66 or anything below 100, it's kind of like layering on, painting on, brushing off the off or on the, the effect that you have. Right now, since we're on a race, it's brushing off. So first, let's make this a little bit smaller and brush off near his mouth, something like so. And then we're gonna brush off his eyebrows because those should be in focus. I'm gonna decrease the flow just a bit to like 40 just going a little bit randomly up in his hair just to get some of his hair at the top especially right here in complete focus and then maybe just a little bit down in this beard then i'm going to increase the size quite a bit decrease the flow a bit more and i'm actually just going to paint over his face and we can sh press o on our keyboard to show the mask overlay and now we can see that part of the red isn't as red anymore, meaning that that effect that we applied, the sort of blurriness is not as strong right here in the middle of his face. Okay, so let's click done. And then we can see the before and after. And it's kind of subtle, but there's some more blur around here like so. And I like that. Now let's dive in with the adjustment brush to make sure that his eyes look really good. And I'm zooming in just by pressing the Z key on my keyboard and then pressing M to bring up my hand. And that allows me to move around his face. So now I'm going to just with new settings, brush in his eyes across his whole eyes like so. Press O to see where I'm brushing. Just like so, okay, just like that. 
And now I want to sharpen just a bit. Actually, first I'm going to cl increase clarity and increase sharpness. I'm also going to um, increase the contrast just a bit. Actually, maybe not contrast, just the exposure, especially of the highlights. So now if we turn on and off, or if we turn just this one on or off, we can see what this does. We don't want to go too far. Look what happens if you go too far with this. It starts to be, look like an alien, alien eyes. We do not want that. So make sure that that looks pretty good. One thing that you can do, um, Caleb has some pretty dark brown eyes, so it doesn't work as well with his eyes. But if you do want to go in and bring out the color in someone's eyes, if they have blue or more like hazel eyes, you can create a new brush. And there's this effect called Iris Enhance. And that's also for, they have some effects for, or preset brushes for softening skin, teeth whitening. I'll show you the softening skin one right now. So let's go ahead and zoom out. With our brush tool selected, we're just going to click New. And then we're going to select that Soften Skin Brush. What happens is it changes the settings already. Clarity here, it decreases clarity, but it also kind of brings up the sharpness. So let's just make this brush a little bit bigger, and then let's just go over Caleb's skin. And this is something that's good. I would do this a little bit more for woman's skin just a little bit with Caleb's skin we're actually going to do this but we're going to bring it down just a bit so bring down the clarity or bring back up the clarity actually so it helps kind of just get rid of any of those like minor imperfections so let's press O to see where I'm brushing just like so looking pretty good so I am going to bring up clarity just a little bit like so and turn this on off to see what that looks like okay so we're actually going to add a new radial filter so just click new and then reset these settings you can just double click on any of the titles over here to reset them to zero and then just click and drag around his face like so and then we're going to invert the mask and if we press O we can see now we have his face selected I'm just going to bring up the highlights just a little bit exposure just a tiny bit and warm it up just a hair now if you don't want this image to be warm that's okay you don't need if you want a more moody picture you can but for a social media profile pic I think adding a little bit of warmth we're going to add one more let's do a linear filter we see that the sun is highlighting back here. We're going to exaggerate that a little bit more. So I'm going to click and drag something like so. Maybe move it down just a bit. And I'm going to make this really warm. So this is warming up the background actually. But as I do this, you can see that it's warming up his face as well. And so what I'm going to do is actually erase that. So I'm going to take my brush tool, erase, turn the flow to 100, decrease the size just a bit and erase his face. So I'm warming up the background, but I do not want to warm up his face too much because we already added that last little bit of warmth with the radial filter. So we don't want to make it too obnoxiously warm. So that, you know, with skin tones, you can really tell when something's unnatural, when something, the white balance is off or something like that. But here with the background more warm like that, looks pretty good. You can't really tell that that's not how it looked in the background actually. It just makes the photo look a little bit more warm and inviting. All right, so let's go back to our regular tools. We're gonna go down here and we're just gonna zoom in. And let's see if we have a bit of uh, noise that we have to get rid of. There's just a tiny bit of noise, so I'm just gonna do a little bit of noise reduction. So that's something I do a little bit with my portraits if I am getting a little bit of noise if I used a higher ISO or something like that and then I'm going to go down to effects and then this is really a stylistic choice for adding vignettes or even grain some people like to add grain to their their portraits with a vignette I can just decrease this quite a bit and the purpose of a vignette 
is to focus your attention on what's in the middle. So for a portrait where your person is the center of your photo, this is the perfect instance. I don't want it to be so, I like the size of this, but I want it to be a little bit softer. So I'm going to increase the feathering. And then I can also see about decreasing the midpoint, but I think the standard midpoint was fine, but really just cranking up the, the feather and something like that looks pretty darn good. So let's look at the before and after. Before, after, before, after. Skin looks a little bit better. Eyes are a little bit brighter. The eyes are really the focal point for any portrait. You need your eyes to pop. You need your eyes to, to be bright and sharp. And so that is my number one tip for por editing portraits is make sure that the eyes are sharp. Adding clarity, adding a little bit of sharpness and brightening up the whites of his eyes just a little bit. So I'm pretty happy with this. What about you? What do you think about this portrait? Do you think I could do anything else? Leave a comment below. I would love to hear what you have to say about this. And if you are interested in editing more portraits like this, I will be posting a link to our full headshot course, which includes how to shoot headshots, both indoors, outdoors, with flash, without flash, and editing headshots. So we're going to dive into more different situations like this, where we're outdoors without a flash, where we're indoors with a flash, and how to edit each of those types of photos. And we'll be, I'll be posting that course, like I mentioned, in closer to December 2016. So if it's that time, by then I should have a link to that course in this course, in this video description. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in another tutorial. Have a great day.